this movie could just be one of the most beautiful movies I think I've ever seen. If you're new here, I like to talk about those movies that get a little bit less coverage, don't get talked about I think as much, and really just try and find those hidden gems for one myself and two, and maybe add something on your list. So if you are new, please do consider hitting subscribe. That being said, on with the review. After Yang, I really don't know where to start with this movie. In this, we're following Jake and Kyra. So they're a couple living in China that have adopted a Chinese girl, Mika. And in this world, there's a little sci-fi element to it. I say little, it's kind of the plot of the movie. In this, they've bought a second hand kind of android called Yang and Yang's job is to teach Mika Chinese heritage and her ancestors and kind of the culture of this movie really just play the role of her brother. Now the plot of this movie and what happens really early on Yang just shuts down and kind of in human terms he's dead. Now not wanting to upset Mika, Colin Farrell's character who really we mainly focus on and follow through this movie he's here to try and save Yang as best he can or really find a solution. Now, now there is a few hurdles he comes across because he was bought second hand so he can't go back to the original seller, this company called brothers and sisters. So he tries a few local shops, his neighbour then even reaches out and says he knows somebody who's a little bit kind of underground when it comes to tech. But it feels like we're following just a father's struggle with accepting his kid's past. The film hits on a few different notes like that. Now he's doing that to not upset his daughter. Whilst he's struggling and not accepting no for an answer, you feel that his marriage and his relationship with his partner is kind of widening because she just wants to get back to their life or maybe buy a new android. Whereas Jake's not giving up. He wants to make sure that he can do right by Yang in here. Whilst he's on his search, what they discover is that Yang had a hidden camera and was recording during his life. The first person he goes to is a conspiracy theorist. Start someone a rabbit hole and I'm so glad to report this movie does not become big corporate conspiracy theory. All that does is lend him to the one next step in the movie and from there the conspiracy ends, the woman he speaks with just shuts that down. Basically what's happened is the camera was there as part of an early, early program where Yang and other androids like him would record what they thought was a memorable moment for maybe just a couple of seconds each day. And the idea of this was to try and understand what an android would deem memorable, which is a very curious concept. You know, we all have our own memories, we all have things that we like to reflect on, but what is it that makes that memorable? How would you know to have recorded that in your head? Very interesting premise. And it's something that I think resonated with me personally, just through bereavements and passings, and I'm a very firm believer in it's somebody's memory that lives on. You know, talk about that person, or, or relive their stories. Not well, relive, but talk about their stories. Tell them of the, the best jokes that that person had. It doesn't need to be your memory with them, but what matter to them. And that's, I think, what really hit this home for me, this movie. It is slow, just a man following breadcrumbs and, and really just trying to understand more about his, his son, so to speak, although not living, his son. But through these memories, what they see is it's a little bit of solace and there's a few questions as well about who people were in his memories and these are all answered in the movie. We understand Yang has lived a life. Of course, as an android, he doesn't age and they need to act fast because now that he's shut down, his body can decompose and they don't want that for Mika. They don't want to upset her because although an android, that was her big brother. And another element of this is that Yang had also been teaching Mika not only about their, their heritage and you know Chinese culture, but also family and that although she's adopted, she's part of this family as much as anybody else. And there's so many beautiful moments. There's a simplicity to this movie. And it's the realization and the understanding that Yang had a life and how close to humanity did he come? And it's just beautifully executed here. You know, whether it's Jake, just reliving the memories and, and obviously Kyra as well, the, the mother, you know, relive and of course she feels it as well but she's just wanting to move on and there's a, one of the most beautiful moments in this as well I feel was, was Jake talking about tea. Now he owns a tea shop, his fascination with tea and, and making the, the brew and making these different combinations and how it's more of an art than a drink and a little bit of how Yang may not understand that fully and also it seemed to show some of these moments in a little bit of a disjointed way which I feel just fed into this kind of memory angle. Some of the lines were being repeated or maybe said a little bit differently. Not jumped throughout the movie, just within that memory. It kind of repeats itself sentence by sentence, but each time maybe a little bit different. And it's that way where memories can play a funny thing. Really the first woman that, that gets this camera of Yang's memories, she wants to keep it. She has a museum for androids and these kind of technological things. And so it's a huge deal having footage of what essentially is a robot's memories. Look, we're not here to 
to really follow Yang or the outcome of Yang. It's all about the journey and all about the impact that he left on the different people in his life, whether it's the current family now or before he even came to this family, because although they bought him second hand, the previous owner also bought him second hand. So, you know, Yang's been about. Yang has had an influence on a lot of people in a really nice, beautiful way. There's just this stillness to the movie, calmness throughout the entire thing, that, which is a shame to say that it may not be for everybody, because I cannot fault this movie in any capacity. The only thing I could see is that it may not be for everybody. But coming back to that point and just seeing the impact of dealing with a death, not true death, but it feels like one. So seeing that, how it impacts someone individually, and then their relationships between other parties, who else was connected to Yang, and what they want for him moving forward. It's not going to be quite a funeral as such, but, but the closest thing they can do for a funeral. And of course, it's Micah's understanding of family. What makes a family? What makes her part of this family? None of it's beaten over the head these messages as it goes on. You're just left with these feelings. Now, as I said, I'm maybe a little biased in regards to the kind of memory angle and, and somebody living on and in that capacity. But even without that, where would I be rating this? I would be saying you make time for this movie. It's not one just to throw on in the background. Put the phone down, shut it off, and just follow the journey, you know? Watch one of the best performances, I think, of Colin Farrell. I think it's so understated. And that's amazing. Best performance doesn't need to be an over-the-top kind of action romp or have some amazing huge monologues in a movie. Sometimes it is just these ones that just catch you off guard and they're fucking gorgeous. So look, have you watched After Yang? If you have, let me know down below. Do we agree or disagree? And if you are new, please do hit subscribe and I've got plenty more coming out. Maybe add a few more movies onto your watch list. But thank you so much for watching.